السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His household, his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them and bless every one of us Brothers and sisters We are looking at the supplications or the du'as that are made mention of in Revelation. And Revelation is divided into two. You have the Qur'an and you have the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So within the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of many of these du'as. We were speaking about the du'a or the supplication of Musa alayhi salam in the previous episode. And I'd like to make mention of uh, the fact that the prophets of Allah, May peace be upon them all. They did not curse. They did not seek the destruction of people until a point uh, where they felt that they were totally belied. Then they sought the help of Allah using specific words. So it was not necessarily curse, but it may have been a dua of destruction. I give you an example of Musa alayhi salam. There was a point where he told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, you have given the Pharaoh lots of wealth and he is using that wealth in order to distract and deviate. He's using it to oppress and to do wrong, to turn people away. So, Oh Allah, I am asking you to extinguish that wealth of his. رَبَّنَا طُمِسْ عَلَىٰ أَمْوَالِهِمْ وَاشْدُدْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ فَلَا يُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى يَرَوُ الْعَذَابَ الْأَلِيمِ O oh my Rabb, O oh my Rabb, Musa alayhi salam is saying, itmis ala amwalihim, switch off or turn off or extinguish or eradicate the wealth of theirs, their wealth, because they were using that wealth for evil. Washdud ala qulubihim and uh, tighten their heart, tighten their hearts. The reason why tighten their hearts is because they're not accepting it. Now their hearts will be tightened and they will deserve the punishment because they are not going to believe until they see that punishment. That's what he says. They are not going to believe until they see that punishment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this dua. And one very interesting factor is that uh, these duas are made mention of as a warning for us to say that when we harm people, they may decide to pray for our goodness, they may decide to pray that we soften our hearts, but there comes a point when they give up too. And when they give up, what will happen is they start praying against us. And I remember saying in one of the episodes, اتَّقِ دَعْوَةَ الْمَظْلُومِ فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حِجَابِ It's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Be fearful of the dua, the supplication made against you by the one whom you have wronged. For indeed there is no barrier between that supplication and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was a beautiful example of Musa alayhi salatu wa salam's dua. Uh, I want to move on to another dua that definitely we learn from the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of the pious worshippers known as Ibadur Rahman. Uh, Ibadur Rahman in Surah Al-Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards the end describes the true worshippers of the Most Merciful. And the description is very lengthy. I've spoken about it in the past and I'm sure many others have also spoken about it because it is a part of the Qur'an and uh, definitely lessons from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are two supplications that have been mentioned that these true worshippers of Allah utter. They say these du'as. The one that is made mention of رَبَّنَا اصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمَ إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غَرَامًا O oh, our Rabb, divert away from us the punishment of hellfire for indeed that punishment is filled with torment, with, with pain, with harm and it is very, very severe, very dangerous, etc, etc. So, when we are true worshippers of the Almighty, we have hope in the mercy of Allah. 
uh, we will also fear the punishment of Allah. Because when we fear the punishment of Allah, it leads us to doing deeds that will protect us from that fire, from abstaining from deeds that would have got us into the fire or into the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and supplicating, calling out to Allah constantly, Oh Allah, save me from the fire. It's very important that we call out to Allah using these words. رَبَّنَا اصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غَرَامًا What beautiful dua. And we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, people enter Jannah either because they worked to stay away from Jahannam or they worked to enter Jannah or they worked out of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May we fall into any one of those categories, the highest being the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is a dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of in Surat Al-Furqan towards the end where the true believers ask Allah always to protect them from hellfire because that hellfire is definitely very, very severe, serious and very uh, painful. We then look at another dua made by the same, the same uh, worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is this time connected to family members, connected to progeny because the true worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are always concerned about others as well, not just themselves. MashaAllah, I've seen the light, for example, I'm guided, I still continue to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. This is what a person would think. This is what uh, a worshipper of Allah would think. I, if you worship Allah alone and you try your best to fulfill your obligations to stay away from prohibitions, you should want the same for those who are closest to you, starting with your family members and then the circles that you interact with and so on. So the dua that is made, <coughs> is made mention of here in Surah Al-Furqan again, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ Which means those uh, true worshippers of Ar-Rahman, the true worshippers of Allah who is the most merciful, they are the ones who say, رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ <clears throat> o our Rabb, grant us from our spouses and our offspring, meaning our offspring, not just your children, but the children's children and so on, the coolness of our eyes. Grant us the coolness of our eyes through our children, our spouses, our family members, وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imaman And make us the leaders of the righteous. So you are working towards earning this righteousness or being righteous, becoming a leader of the righteous. Becoming a leader of the righteous, you see, you just have to try. You just have to keep on obeying Allah's instruction. Allah is the one who grants you success. There is no need to fight with someone else when you want to be a leader. No. In the case of being a leader in righteousness, there is no war with another person, but rather there is a sacrifice and a struggle between you and Allah. You are sacrificing and struggling for the sake of Allah. You are trying your best to please Allah. You are not trying to do someone else down. You are not trying to attack someone else. You will not achieve anything by uh, putting someone else down but rather you will achieve a lot by earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, if people are doing something wrong, you might want to teach in a positive way. You might want to reach out to them or to convey the message to others to save themselves from that type of behavior or from that understanding. But we don't need to attack others in a derogatory way, negative way, vulgar, abusive, etc. Uh, because being a leader of the righteous, it's not just one person. Uh, a whole nation could be leaders of the righteous. Uh, we are leading our family members in goodness as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'oolun ar ra'iyatihi. Each one of you, every one of you is a shepherd and each one of you is responsible for his flock. And he goes on to explain that even in the family, you know, the father is a shepherd. He has a role to play and he is responsible for his flock. So this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A quick translation of it once again, O oh my Rabb, 
Rabbana, uh, O oh my Rabb, grant me from grant me the coolness of our eyes of my eyes through my family and my children my offspring and make me a leader of the righteous or make us leaders of the righteous rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhurriyyatina qurrata a'yun waj'alna lil muttaqina imama very interestingly this dua can be repeated even if you don't have offspring even if you're not married because obviously it would mean if Allah accepts it from you, He would bless you with a spouse who's going to be the coolness of your eyes and inshallah children who will be the coolness of your eyes. So it doesn't mean that only if I have a spouse and children, then I use these words to call out to Allah. But rather you call out to Allah from a young age using these words and they will definitely open the doors of goodness by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, a person who is having difficulty, hardship, problems uh, in their married life or with their children, uh, some children might be difficult, etc. Together with trying to find solutions to the problems you are facing, it would be advisable to call out to Allah. And words of this nature are really helpful because they are words that Allah says the pious those who are conscious of Allah, those who are the true worshippers of the most merciful, calling on the mercy of Allah would actually use to call out to Allah. So this dua goes far and wide in solving our problems and in giving us the mercy that we are searching for from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and this is why Allah says, after making mention of all these qualities, of the people who are true worshippers of Allah, they call out to Allah to save them from hellfire. They seek forgiveness from uh, sin uh, that they may have committed. They are concerned about the generations to come because part of the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a duty or the duty of every individual is to pass the baton. You know, you have iman. It's not good enough to keep it to yourself. You have to give it to others and you give it to your children Subhanallah, your family members, that is the minimum, that is the minimum. So then Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ يُجَزَوْنَ الْغُرْفَةَ بِمَا صَبَرُوا وَيُلَقَّوْنَ فِيهَا تَحِيَّةً وَسَلَامًا خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا Amazing verse, Allah says, those are the ones who will be granted, who will be granted the reward of Al-Ghurfa. Al-Ghurfa is a special place in paradise for those who were concerned with what Allah has made mention of. And the concern includes being concerned about your family members and your children and praying for them and working hard with them, spending time with them, being dedicated, trying your best to make them understand their duty unto Allah, remembering that we may not succeed always. Look, there were prophets of Allah, such as the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam and the others. Uh, they had children and family members, Lut alayhi salam, his wife, uh, the, the, the Prophet sallam, his uncle and so on. There are examples of people who are from the family members or broader families who did not accept the message. But the trial was there, the dua was there, the Prophet ﷺ prayed for them uh, to be guided. And so did uh, the others. They prayed to be guided. Nuh alayhi salam prayed for his son to be guided as well. But Allah says, no, uh, we chose not to guide that particular child. So we try our best. Where the children have grown up as adults, there is a point that we may not be able to do much, but we've handed the baton prior to that, hopefully. It's not good enough to, uh, you know, be engaged in sin and be engrossed in that which displeases Allah until your child begins to displease Allah too. And then you say, oh, what has happened here? You know, it may be too late by that time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let that happen to us. So this is why Allah says those who have borne patience, those who have been patient and those who have uh, tried hard, Allah says they will have Al-Ghurfa, the special place in Jannah because of that patience and they will be greeted with Salam. They, they, they will be greeted and welcomed with peace. You know, the peace is the greeting in the dunya, in this world as well as in the hereafter. And so Allah says, Khalidina fiha. They will dwell therein forever and ever. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and Jannatul Firdaus. We move on to yet uh, another supplication, a beautiful supplication that is a very, very important topic also connected to family members. 
Brothers and sisters, you want the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must make sure that your relationship with your parents is good. If you want the mercy of Allah, if you want Allah to answer your du'as, if you want goodness in this world, you must make sure that you are kind to your parents. Some people might say, well, my parents are very bad people. They uh, ask me to sin. They stop me from obeying Allah's instruction. All of that should not stop you from being kind to your parents. You must be kind. This kindness is something you don't have to compromise. No matter what they're doing, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not speak about obedience uh, when it comes to the disobedience of Allah. Because obedience is for Allah. But kindness and you know, to listen to them in that which they are reasonable, that which they have not gone beyond the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is part of that kindness inshallah. So uh, in order for us to understand that uh, the duty upon us is to be kind to our parents and its reasoning, we need to go back to creation. Allah created man and in order to reproduce, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used a system. And that is the parenthood where we will have parents and the parents have had children. We are the children, so we look up to those whom Allah chose uh, as the creator uh, to be parents of those whom he has brought onto the earth, meaning us. So this is why there is so much of importance given to parents. A lot of people who are bad to their parents, they hurt their parents uh, physically or sometimes they are unkind to their parents. They taste the punishment of it in this world and the next. And this is why when a parent actually curses the child or makes a dua, supplicates against his or her own child, uh, there are two conditions. One is if the child has deserved that, that dua or that supplication against the child because they were evil, in that case, it's very dangerous because that uh, prayer would be accepted. You know, when a parent makes dua for a child, supplicates for a child to Allah, uh, a lot of the times that dua is accepted, especially if it is deserved. If it is deserved, it is accepted. So rather make good duas. My beloved parents out there who are listening to me, uh, when your children have done something wrong, be careful. Don't make a bad dua. Make a dua that Allah soften their hearts, Allah bring them back, Allah guide them, Allah make them kind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, etc., etc. Even when they have done something bad. But if you were to use the dua and to curse them and to make dua for their destruction, they might turn back to Allah. And you know what? They might suffer as a result of your dua. However, the second type of dua, the second category is, the curse that the parents make against the children when the children do not deserve that curse. That curse rebounds back to the parents. Remember this, it's very dangerous. So this is why don't just curse. That curse might come back to you with a lot of harm and destruction. We have a lot of parents who say, may Allah destroy my child. You know, he's been so bad and I don't want to see him again. May Allah destroy him and curse him. And people say, you'll always see suffering in your life and you'll always be the odd one out and you will always be... Uh, the one who is, uh, you know, you'll see what Allah will do with you. He's going to fix you. He's going to destroy you and so on. If your child was innocent in what you are arguing with them about, and if you were the guilty one, actually the harm of that curse will come back to you. You know, the evil plot does not come and catch anyone besides he who deserves it. So who deserves it? When you are cursing someone, it's evil. That evil, if it's deserved by you, it's going to come back to you. It's going to haunt you. So be careful. There are many children out there who complain to us that our parents are being unreasonable. They are cursing us. Don't curse your children. Don't curse your children. While we are spending a moment today speaking about how important it is for us to pray for our parents, we would be failing in our duty if we did not remind the parents to be good and kind to their children as well. Be reasonable. These children actually belong to Allah, but they were given to you temporarily by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to see whether you do what Allah wants with your children or you're doing what your whims and fancies want in transgression of the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against your own children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So Allah speaks about in Surah Al-Ahqaf, uh, a man, and Allah says we created man and we enjoined, we asked him, we requested him to be kind to his parents. 
وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا Indeed, Allah has instructed mankind to be kind to his parents. Man to be kind to his parents, male and female both included. حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ كُرْهًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْهًا His mother carried him during the gestation period with great difficulty and gave birth to him in even greater difficulty. Amazing. So whether your mother's a Muslim or a non-Muslim, whether the mother is obedient or transgressing the command of Allah, kindness is something that you have no excuse regarding. You must be kind. You might ask why? Well, Allah has given you the reason because your mother has given birth to you. Your mother has carried you for nine months. Your mother has struggled and suffered to give birth to you. It was a near death experience in the case of the majority. My brothers and sisters, we have to honor our mothers, respect them for the fact that they took care of us right at the beginning. There is an exception. And the exception is, if your mother has been so evil as to want to dump you, to kill you, to hurt you, to bury you alive, you have the permission to distance yourself from that type of a mother or father. If your father has abused you, tries to abuse you, molested sexually, whatever else it may be, in that case you have the right to be distant from that particular father because the relationship has become such that we need to protect ourselves. Try not to be bitter, although it's very difficult, we're humankind, but do not have something known as reverse oppression. Reverse oppression, they did wrong. It doesn't justify you to do wrong to them. You may want to stay away. You may want to go very far. You may want, have to, you may want to have very little to do with them or nothing at all, depending on how bad the crime was. And uh, that does not justify uh, any misbehavior, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So Allah is saying your mother took care of you, they, they, she gave birth to you. So your mother is more deserving of your kindness than anyone else. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, Man ahaqqun nasa bi husni suhbati? Who is the most deserving of, the, of my kind companionship from the people? He says, Ummuk, your mother. So then he was asked again, okay, who, who next? You know, who else is more deserving of my kind companionship? Remember, the term here is not obedience, it's kindness. Kindness and obedience, huge difference. Uh, although part of kindness is to obey in that which is reasonable. So he says, your mother. Oh, well, that was the second time. Then he said, okay, the questioner says, so who next? So he says, well, your mother, a third time. And then the fourth time he says, well, who after that? He says, oh, your father. Subhanallah, all the dads out there, myself included, wow, uh, you know, the kindness. We have been instructed firstly about our own mothers. Those of us whose mothers are alive, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who fulfill their rights before they pass away. There is a hadith that says that, you know, destruction be upon a person who has had the opportunity to serve one or both of his parents or hers in old age. And uh, that has not resulted in them entering Jannah. Uh, subhanallah, which means they haven't served them and they didn't enter Jannah as a result of serving their parents. It goes to show that when you serve your parents, you actually attain Jannatul Firdaus. You would actually get paradise. So it's not going to be easy. This hadith, the Prophet ﷺ speaks about being kind to your mother uh, three times more than uh, your father, but that does not mean you have the right to be unkind to your father. Uh, I guess the mothers have, you know, a soft spot. And emotionally, they are very, very soft compared to the fathers out there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. We will continue in the next episode. And until then, I say, Aqulu qawli hadha, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.